Hey guys, how's it going? Um, the other day, what I think it was last week or so, we were trying to make ivy or vines in in Blender. I just want to cover some of the stuff that we either found or like realized as we were going. Um, initially, I was building them with splines, um, but grease pencil is basically a spline, right? It's a grease pencil path or what or whatnot. Uh, so I just wanted to highlight some of the stuff that we'd found. Uh, in case you're wanting to make ivy or vines or something along a mesh. Uh, so let's just, we'll just shift A, a grease pencil, and we'll go with blank, which basically will add a empty for a grease pencil at wherever the 3D cursor is. Um, and if you hit tab or you go into edit mode, I think I have this because of machine, machine tools. But uh, if you go into draw, then you can draw your, your uh, grease pencil paths and whatnot. If you press tab, let's go into edit mode. You can see those are, there's tons of points in there, right? And you can see it's not really mapping uh, predictably. Uh, so let's just look go in here and we'll delete these points. We still have it in draw mode, but you can see up here when you're in draw mode while selecting a grease pencil, um, I don't even know what you would call this, container or actor or object. Um, you can set it to surface and then, then when you draw on things, it'll, uh, conform to the surface you can see here. So I could do like, like this up the side here and it'll try and figure out how to do that. It does a pretty good job. Uh, pretty happy with the results of that. As you can see, of course that wasn't in view, so it didn't know that I could do that, but that's, that's not bad. So let's, uh, let's do this. Let's see, let's find, um, let's say the vine or root starts here, it goes up this way and then goes there, right? And we keep, we keep drawing into the, into the mesh and just kind of like detail out what we're, what we're looking for. Maybe this will, you'll have some breaks sometimes like this or like where these branches, uh, are starting and ones disconnect and whatnot. You'll have to clean those up manually. Um, as far as I know, they don't really merge together. I'm sure there's a way uh, to merge uh, grease pencil paths together and, and all that, but um, we haven't looked really into that. This The cool thing is being able to path all this stuff out, right? And then when you go into edit mode, you can see all these points. Now let's go to wireframe so we can really look at these uh, these points up a little closer. You can see all these points way too high res for making uh, turning this into a spline. Um, so there's a few things you can do while it's still a grease pencil. You could go into the modifier stack here and you can actually use simplify and you can see by default, it's set to fixed. So when you drag this around, you get a fixed amount, like evenly spaced points, which can work pretty well. Uh, a lot of the times if you have straight, straight paths, like this is pretty straight. There's not much need for extra points in there. Um, you can do sample, which is quite interesting because sample just tries to evenly displace them out to get the shape to retain. And you can lower that quite quite low if you need to. Uh, the one I really like is adaptive. Now adaptive is basically trying to keep points in areas with high detail and then wiping out areas of like no detail. Um, so if we go down to like, uh, let's see can see this is pretty good and it, it retains all of that information right so let's just uh control oh i gotta go into object mode control a to apply that modifier and then uh if you press f3 or spacebar depending on if you type in uh convert you can do a bezier curve click that and then you'll see that you now have a curve in combination, like they're on top of each other. So if I hide the, the grease pencil path, now you have this, which is actually curve information. Like these are, these are just curve points, right? Cause now it's a Bezier. Um, so if we go in here now and you go to the, the object data properties for this curve, you can then go down and actually add the, the, uh, not the offset. The extrude on this mesh 
or no, not even extrude, sorry, bevel. And when you add that, you can see you add some thickness to it. I'll hold down shift so we have a little bit more finite control. And you can see there's a lot of geometry in there, and that's just because the resolution preview is it's adding 12 segments between each point. And because you'd already kind of defined that in the previous uh, process of making it in grease pencil, you can just drop this to one, and you should get a, a much cleaner result. Uh, the other thing is if, if it's not good enough for you or you need to, let's say, select an area and, and lower the red, like in here, it's it's really, I mean, it looks high res and that's just because all the handles are there as well. But if you say you needed to lower this area, you can select that and go to curve and then do a cleanup and decimate. And then you have like a little slider here for controlling uh, how much that gets decimated down and it's only going off a of selection. So you can do some more finite cleanup. And that's that's pretty cool. If you need the side count to be higher than four, I believe that's just a matter of uh is it this this one? No. It's not here. I knew I was gonna forget something. Where is that at? Resolution, I think it's this one, yeah. So and this is just adding sides to it. So if you set it to zero, I believe it's just four sided. Yeah, you can see here. And then as you uh, as you increase that resolution, you can add more sides to it. The other thing is the fill caps. If you need these to be capped, you can just uh, check that, and then we'll just cap cap those guys. And uh, yeah, and then once you have that, say you're you're pretty happy. Sure, we could probably connect that and and clean these up. These ones I think you clean up afterwards, but this one I'm pretty sure you could connect that in the spline. But um, let's just go ahead and. Press F3 and we'll convert convert to mesh. And now you have uh, geometry. And you can use that for your, your vines and whatnot if you wanted to do it manually like this. The other thing is while, while it's still a spline, uh, you can grab these and if you press like um, Alt, Alt S, you can actually scale, scale these guys in. It's like just a, an extra property that's in the the radius value. So it modifies the default value and, and adds either like subtraction or, or addition to the, I think it's just a multiplier or a divide. And so if you need to taper these in more, you're, you're able to do so. Some pretty nice control. Yeah, and then you just convert to mesh and then you can do your manual cleanup if you wanna merge these and whatnot. Or I find that um, more often than not, trying to make these merge together nicely is going to make UVing more difficult. So I would just suggest cleaning it up in the spline view and just getting that all to just look correct. I wonder if you can bridge this. No. Nope. Anyways, I haven't looked that up, but I'm almost positive. There's got to be a way to connect those. Anywho, there you go. That's kind of what we discovered during the uh, stream the other day. And I think once you convert it to a mesh, you probably just want to auto smooth it and get that turned up. Um, let's see here. I'm going to use machine tools to do this. So smoothing and then auto smooth all the way to 180. And it should be pretty, pretty clean. I know how to merge these once you, once you have it geometry, but yeah. Anyways, hopefully that was useful. And uh, it's a pretty short video, but I like, uh, I like these videos being pretty short and direct about what we're looking at. All right, cool. Have a good one.